And Darcy Vessio waits in the goal square, and there's a bit of a tension going on down there as well. As we get things underway in Blacktown, the Giants back on home turf for the first time in five weeks after all their travels around the country. McKinnon trying to bring it down for Parker, and Carlton are so effective with those clearances, and they work one towards G here. Bouncing ball, and Dalpos has that assignment. It's a kick, scramble down the wing towards Parker, who loves the contested stuff. Works it wide to Zarika, and the Giants have one-on-ones up the ground. There's a big chance here with Privatelli running on. Good mark taken as well by the centre-half forward they picked up from Melbourne Smith. And she finds Beeson. The Giants are on here, and right in the middle is the captain, Alicia Eva. Doesn't quite have the journey from here, though, does she, Nick? No, not quite. I think she'll look to try and give this one off. She's got Beeson at the top of the square there. Sets it up, top of the square. Carlton with numbers back and a good effective spoil over the top. So at ground level, Presparkus and Carlton able to work it clear through Gabriella Pound. And we'll get the first stoppage. Yeah, good to see that we're, not, we're nice and calm under pressure there with Alicia Eva, just making sure she tried to hit him up a nice free player. The lasso, of course, and the Giants take the free kick. Bennett's able to link up. And another inside 50 for GWS. At ground level, there's a chance here for Staunton, who gets a great piece of it. And in the opening minute and a half, the Giants hit the scoreboard through their Irish woman. And that's what I was talking about. I've been a big fan of the way she's gone about her football. And just any time it hits the ground, she's just obviously um, super uh, positive in the way she can get her goals. But she works up the ground, she works back, she's starting deep here. But... Nick, when you're kicking inside 50, you know what you're going to get. Like, whether it's a mark or, like here, she just finishes her work so well. Absolutely. And, you know, she does have that unique kicking style, Cora. But, you know, when you get it inside 50, if it's on the deck, Cora's going to be there and she finishes off her work excellently. So, great start from the Giants. And a great PlayStation replay as well. Cora Staunton was on fire in the wet against St Kilda a fortnight ago. And in these dry conditions, she shows she can do it here as well with her ninth of the season. Tracked down by McAvoy. Little dainty kick out towards the wing. Missed the mark. Intended for Plain and the Giants surge forward again. Lovely kick in. And Smith, a couple of marks already. Looking for Staunton again. And a nice intercept mark taken by the Blues who play on quickly. Head to centre wing. Another one-on-one. -on -one. Trying to get out. Over the top is Stevens. Little handball for Presparkus. Able to keep it in. Last year's MVP in AFLW. Ruled out of this year's equation after suspension a few weeks back. There's Lalawifi trying to run onto it. And the Giants have the numbers. Zarika with that trademark left boot of hers towards Staunton. And... Uh, Got a wires crossed, and Carlton can take it away. The returning Charlotte Wilson working it wide towards Plain, and Presparkus is there in company. So strong over the footy, Matty Presparkus. Little nudge in the back. Umpire said that was OK from Tully, who scrambles a kick down towards Presparkus again. Heavy weather out there on the outer side. And kept in. Cleverly by Garnett to the advantage of teammates. Strong tackle, and the umpire says that's holding the ball. Tully is pinged. The Blues not wasting any time looking for Harris. Giants defence under pressure for the first time as O'Day crashes in for Carlton. Not a lot of lane changes, Nick, so far. <laughs> Stayed on that outer wing. Um, but you can just see defensively, they don't want any ball coming through. Here's the access on the corridor. So has it been some enormous pressure applied already? Kennan brought it down for Elise Parker. And she's getting no room to move at all. Averaging 23 disposals this season. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I guess d reflecting on what you just said, Ben, it's, it's great to see the Giants bringing that pressure early. We've started a little bit slow in games, so bringing the heat early is going to be really key for the girls today. Big up and under by Parker, who leads the comp in uh, metres gained and a little touch off the boot, so the umpire will throw it in. And that's your barometer, because Carlton like to move the ball nice and fast, open up 
um, with their handball going through the middle of the ground. But the Giants, as I mentioned, just setting up beautifully defensively. So Moody v McKinnon again. The throw favoured the Giants. Chris Parkers, a hopeful handball over the top, trying to buy time for Stevens. Eva made the tackle stick. So too did her opposite number loins. Chris Parker's had it slapped away by Parker. McKinnon had to get down low. And at least Parker was out the back. It's a decent piece of that on the left boot. Staying down for the Giants was Smith. Went to the voice and missed the mark. Tidied up by Plain. Now Privatelli a long way from home. Again in the hands of Parker and she's able to get penetration in the kick once more. Every player in this half of the ground right now. Room out the back if the Giants can get a telling possession and Tully tries to provide one here. And favours Carlton. Room out there on the wing once more. Carlton have been heading down that wing a lot already. And here's Plain who kicked two wonderful goals last week including that one from 45 metres on the run where she gave us the Plain celebration. Vessio has a couple to beat. Goes outside the 50 metre arc and links up with Press Parkers. It's two on one now in favour of the Giants and the two win out. And that's that's a testament to the defence. So Vessio's had to come right out to the top of the 50 to get involved in the play to try and get a deep inside 50. And then obviously the Giants had their set up behind the ball. First intercept mark for GWS. Now the captain, Eva. Kick didn't do her teammate. Many favours and Plain came in to apply the hip and shoulder. Press Parkas joins the party. And the umpire will throw it in. Alicia Eva thought it might have been uh, a deliberate. Yeah, it's great to see the Giants holding nice shape out of defence as well and, and being able to work the ball out nicely is going to be key for them. Wrestle going on in the ruck. Moody v McKinnon. It's been an intriguing battle already. The umpire says, give it to me. McKinnon with more hit outs than anyone else this season. That time Moody did enough for Carlton to get to work clearance wise. Plain told to go. Harris trying to scoop it up. And the Giants again. Effective defensive work. Now Zarika able to leave it for Bennett's. The one on ones. And they work it out cleverly. Now, lovely handball intended for Smith. Carlton under pressure. Zarika goes to ground. Mackerel applying pressure as well, and the umpire will throw it in once more. Carlton were hopeful of the free kick that time. Brazali with no joy. I think the key for, for the Giants today, Carlton set up so well in their defensive 50. They were able to get a lot of drop off, and so if the Giants can keep moving it nicely and, you know, changing angles, that's going to be key to their success. Again, Moody pretty decisive. Egan able to work it to Hosking. Floats one down. Intended for Vessio. It fell short of that. Harris v. Stevens. And an umpire has picked out a free kick. Interesting. Contact below the knees on uh, Chris Parkas. It's been busy early, Chris Parkas. Working nice and hard defensively and obviously with his connection. Egan puts it out in front of Vessio. And Pepper Randall just nudged her under the ball, then palmed it down to Vessio's advantage, who can have a crack for goal and finds a teammate. Chess mark is spilt, but still a chance at ground level for Carlton's opening goal, but it's rushed through on the line by the Giants. You see the Carlton bench just go up as Vessio's having a first shot on goal. As Daniel Harford said, they'll be looking for it at home. Del Poss had a couple to beat, just spilt it out. And they cry for holding the ball, the Carlton fans. Umpires letting it roll. Chris Parkas was waiting out the back, didn't get that far. And she applied a tackle that was dangerous, and that's what I uh, saw her suspended about a month ago now. A similar tackle that went wrong, and she can't believe she's been pinged for that one. Got to be so careful with your tackles now. 
Absolutely. It's um, you know something that's becoming more and more strict, I think, which you know is important in protecting players and, and whatnot, but um, she is a tackling machine. Great work by Tully with the smother. Bennett's doesn't have much to go to, only Privatelli. And the run comes from Mackerel, kept the arms free cleverly. Bennett's puts it down in front of a teammate, which might have to soccer it further up the ground. Great individual battles going on right around the ground right now, and the crowd are loving it. Oh, they're loving it, all right. How good was the physicality there? Anita just laying this tackle here, but smart play with the handballs, just no room to work in, uh, as they say. For speedy, working in a phone box at the moment, so neither team willing to give up. Moody getting a chop out in the ruck this time as O'Day took on the Giants. Oh, Back up ruck ball. in Allen, and the umpire picks out another free kick here against Tully. O'Day with an aggressive option right into the middle of uh, the ground, and it favours Tani Evans. Again, an immediate tackle as soon as the Giant received, and Mackerel had no room to move either. Nick, that's a risky kick. It was, I mean, it was two on one, so you're trying to bite off too much too early with that kick. You just take your time. Absolutely. In saying that, though, I think both teams have absolutely nothing to lose today, and, and you want to see them take the game on, so good to see some aggressive ball movement. How clever was that by O'Day? It just stayed down in the ruck contest and roved the work of Allen and pumped it inside 50 for Vessio. Again, Pepper Randall is taking it personally, trying to keep... Uh, Darcy Vessio goalless today. Pepper Randall is uh, quite a feisty character, so good to see her getting into Dars. Again, strong tackle laid by Loins this time. Pepper is, you know, certainly one of those players for us that's been really key in, in shutting down some key forwards, so it'd be a great matchup between her and Vessio today. Allen's ruck work was tidy for Tully to gain ground for the Giants. Tidied up by Harrington, and gets support from Pound. Hosking out there on the wing with time to steady and try and dance around Tani Evans, who came again, didn't quite complete the tackle, so the umpire let that one go. And in the end, a late whistle, and the Giants do get the free kick. Yeah, the central umpire couldn't quite see the contest, so that was awarded from uh, the umpire in the defensive half. Looked like the right call? Yeah, 100% right call. Kick wasn't great to either, but she's good enough to improvise and turn onto her favourite boot. Pump it down the wing. And there's one of the ends today for the Giants. Big opportunity for Halverson. We haven't seen her since round one. Absolutely. It's great to see Halverson, you know, be back in form and, and find some more form at training and, and be back for this game. She's had a bit of an up and down season and tough to come back into the team. So great to see her out there today. Rugby sevens background and also played soccer as a junior. Good mark taken by Stevens. He was exceptional last week along with Vessio as that link player. There's Tully has been in the wars already. Absorbing all of that physicality. Just can't get the deep entries at the moment. Um, the Carlton Footy Club here, very shallow at times, so that's just, once again, the defence of the Giants. And now, obviously, with the rebound side of it too, Nick, they're struggling to get the ball out of there with the with the forward pressure. Yeah, absolutely. Carton like to, to move the footy nice and quickly up and down the ground, so slowing them down is key. Here's Fessio. Worked her way to front position that time. And here is the chance to claim the goal-kicking title outright. Oh. This is a soda. Put this in the book, Speedy. It's in great form. You can just see there that deep entry. Just get it in, snap over the shoulder, playing like all good forwards in front, protecting the space. Let's see a finish of work. Looking for Carlton's first goal of the game. Trying to answer that Staunton goal and go into the history books. Darcy Vessio squeezes it home and has goal number 15 for the season. She'll win the goal-kicking title again. Nice to get it out of the way in the opening term. Well, that's uh, a relief because uh, that, the floodgates will open now, you watch. So there's the first. She wins the uh, 
goal kicking for the year. And I don't want to predict too much, but I'm thinking a bag of six now. Because <laughs> when that get list, gets lifted off your shoulders, you can certainly open up. So Gemma Houghton, Chloe Malloy and Katie Brennan will have to settle for the runner-up prize. She won the inaugural goal-kicking title back in the first season, Nick, 2017, and she backs it up in 2021. She's an absolute weapon, and we know if Carlton can get it into their forward 50, Darcy will be there to, to kick a goal, but Pepper Randall will not be happy about that one. We'll uh, probably see her get a little bit more into Darcy, I think, now. <laughs> well, you watch Carlton now. I reckon they'll look for Darcy even more and try and get her a big bag. <laughs> Again, it's Parker with another inside 50. She leads AFLW in that stat. Halverson with nice work at ground level. And here's a one-on-one -on -one battle for Staunton. Tried to take the overhead mark. Wound up bringing it down for Bennett, so who's got support out the back from Beeson. And Eva tidies up cleverly on the first bounce. Another entry for Zarika. Gets it on that left foot in a hurry. And out of bounds on the full. Your favourite small forward. Yes. I do like uh, Hanina Zarika. She's actually just so lively. Like Geelong last week, she had multiple opportunities, kicked a beautiful um, goal from the pocket, so she's got so much talent. Playing in front, the captain, co-captain Loins, looking for O'Day. Good work again by Garnett, and Tully's copped another whack. No free kick that she might have been entitled to there. Umpire was happy with it, and here's Stevens on the lead. Time ticking away in this opening quarter. Can either team get one last score? Looks like Carlton, the only team with a chance now. As Stevens is told to play on. Stevenson was on the mark. And Harris tried to come down with it. Great to see Tanya Hetherington off to a really, really good start for the Giants after coming back from an ankle injury. She's been in excellent form this year, so spoiling really well, and she's really key in the Giants' defensive line. On that replay, just Taylor Harris throwing the weight around a little bit. Nice hip and shoulder. Now Hosking going right back into the coal face. Final seconds of the opening quarter. One goal apiece. The Giants first on the board, but now they trail by the single point, and Darcy Vessio has provided us with another history-making moment. A two-time AFLW goal-kicking champ, 2017 and now 2021. And it's a one-point ball game, all to play for in this game between the Giants and the Blues from Blacktown. Stay with us, second quarter coming right up.